Welcome to Some Lab. Today's procedure is the production of benzaldehyde through the oxidation of toluene. Uh, this procedure was posted on the Science Madness website a number of years ago. You can pause and take a look at the details if you wish, but there aren't actually very many details. I chose this procedure not because I actually need benzaldehyde, I don't, nor because I was after a great yield and I didn't get it. In fact, this was a near failure. But rather, this was a chance for me to practice some skills in the lab and also practice some skills with a handheld phone as a camera device. Now, I won't pretend I understand the mechanism behind the reaction. It is an oxidation. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not really sure what's going on with the two catalysts that he used. We've got about 0.1 gram of copper acetate and another 0.1 gram of ferrous sulfate used as a catalyst. Uh, the reaction medium is methanol and water, and here's me very, very carefully measuring out the methanol. I needn't have bothered, a whole bunch of methanol unmeasured was getting added later on. The oxidant used was sodium persulfate. This is readily available as a chlorine-free pool chemical you can pick up from the hardware store relatively cheaply. Turns out to be quite a strong oxidant and really useful in some applications. Uh, one of the things about it is that it doesn't require an acid environment for it to work. Just about every other oxidant you might want to use, whether it's manganese dioxide or potassium permanganate or dichromate or peroxide or whatever it is you might use, most of them require an acid environment to work. So this has certain advantages. I actually dislike working with it. I find the I find the smell objectionable. It smells like some badly cleaned public toilets or something. And it has another disadvantage in that it's not incredibly soluble. And uh, you'll see in a little while that this is one of the factors that led to a you know, low yield in this particular experiment. The procedure called for the persulfate to be dissolved in a mixture of methanol and water, but did not specify how much of each. I just chose a 50-50 mix. But you can see that our addition funnel is filled with something that's not fully dissolved. It's a bit of a slurry or a sediment, and that really has not helped the reaction proceed. A two-phase reaction is never going to be as good as a single-phase reaction. It's just not going to be as efficient. The reaction can only take place at the interface between the particles and the liquid, and is just not going to proceed as well. Uh, and no matter how much stirring, and again we have stirring problems, that it's just not going to go as well. Another problem I had, which you probably spotted, was the fact that I let the temperature creep up. The procedure called for it to stay at around 70 degrees, but it got up to, at one point, up to about 78 degrees. So temperature control is a little bit of an issue here. Now this little shot, you can see a little bit of the yellow oil appearing. I was really excited when I saw that. I thought, yay, that's where my product is going to be. Also got some floaties in there, some purple kind of stuff, which I presume comes from the catalysts that are added. Now that's not so much of a good sign, because if your catalyst is forming a separate phase, it's not going to take part in the reaction so well. I added slowly over a period of two hours, and then I let it settle overnight. This was probably a really bad idea. By the next day, that oil was gone. Maybe it was over-oxidized warm uh, benzoic acid, but we'll find out. Yes, that is the bottom end of a chair leg and some Teflon tape holding my funnel together. It's amazing what you sometimes need to do to make things work. And repurposing lab gear uh, out of household items is just one of those things that you have to do from time to time. We can see in this shot, however, that uh, we do have a lot of that sediment coming out. Uh, so this is unreacted oxidant. Uh, it should not have been there. It should have taken place in the reaction. And uh, this was I was a little bit uh, confused by how much oxidant was needed. I thought this just seems like an awful lot. Indeed, it was nearly 50 grams. But when I actually sat down to do the calculation during the reaction, I never do that. You should always spend some time beforehand doing your calculations because, quite frankly, the saying goes, one hour in the library is worth four hours in the lab. Anyway, I did it and found out that that 50 grams was only about 1.5 molar excess. So, uh, although I suspected at one point there was a mistake in the procedure, and actually, that wasn't the case. That was about right. Now, when people present these videos online, they usually just skip the steps where you're doing all the separations. Uh, I decided to have a go at filming it, and I actually understand why people skip over this a bit. But uh, this is a standard liquid liquid extraction. I'm using DCM, dichloromethane. The procedure again called for diethyl ether. 
I didn't have any of that, and I wasn't about to synthesize any. Uh, main reason being, it's sitting around about 34 degrees around here at the moment, and that's just too warm to be trying to synthesize any diethyl ether. Uh, I figured that I was just inviting trouble synthesizing something that has a boiling point in the mid-30s and a highly explosive. So you'll forgive me for using something else. But in the reading that I did do, I figured DCM was probably going to be okay. Four extractions were done. Well, two actually. I had to split it into two parts because I only have a 250ml set funnel. And what we end up with is an aqueous phase and an organic phase, both similar colour. And uh, it's possible that the aqueous phase contains some benzoic acid, or at least a salt of benzoic acid. And the organic phase will have our benzaldehyde if there is any. This shot is me trying to catch the vapour front, the initial condensation, and the first drips using a handheld camera. I always find distillation a really fascinating process, seeing the boiling liquid, seeing the condensation and refluxing down the side, seeing the vapour front, seeing the, the, the condensing. And in this case, I'm using a short path condenser. I quite like using this. It's quick and efficient to set up and again to clean and pull down. All going well, I'll be able to recover all the DCM that I used and whatever's left over in the organic phase should contain a little bit of our product. If there's enough, the intention was to steam distill it and try and get a few drips of benzaldehyde, but as we'll see in a little while, that just wasn't going to happen. Here's the recovery of the dichloromethane. It's a bit crude. It contains some methanol and probably some water as well. I distilled it the previous day from some paint stripper. And now returning to our aqueous phase, the idea is that we might have some benzoic acid here, and if so, we'd be able to precipitate that out by adding some hydrochloric acid. But nothing happening. The stuff you see at the bottom is just a little bit of the dichloromethane that's settled out. This is us just checking that it's highly acidic, and something should have happened right now if there was any benzoic acid there. This is our final yield, a few drips of yellow oily stuff in the bottom of flask. It smelt bad at first, but after the volatiles had escaped, we had the distinctive aroma of cherries or almonds that you get with benzaldehyde. So what needs to happen to improve this procedure? Well, I think first up is to get the whole thing happening in a single phase, and that means doing some experimentation with the persulfate and methanol and water and finding a way of getting it to dissolve. Interestingly, the procedure as written said that the volume should be less than 250 mils, or at least implied that because the reaction vessels are only a 250 mil flask. If that's true, then we should be able to get it to dissolve in, let's say, a couple of hundred mils, and that'd be nice and workable. Second change to make would be to add the oxidant a little bit more quickly. Two hours seemed a long time in retrospect, and it would be better to get the oxidant in there, actually reacting for a longer period of time. Again, getting all of this happening in a single phase would be a big improvement. The third thing that I think needs to happen is a little bit better temperature control. Allowing the temperature to get as high as 78 degrees was probably not desirable. It would be better if we can keep it down around the 70 level, but that means looking after it a whole lot better. And finally, I think having the apparatus sitting there overnight stirring was a mistake. It would be better to extract it early and get the product out of there so that we don't get any reactions that were undesirable taking their toll on our yield. Anyway, lots to learn from this, and this is certainly a project that I'll return to sometime fairly soon, see if we can actually get uh, a reasonable amount of extractable benzaldehyde. That's it for today. See you next time in the lab.